Hello everyone, Eric Roth, Shamanic Astrology here to talk about another episode of the astrological happenings out there. And there is something uh, significant coming in uh, into form, a new alignment uh, that's going to help us understand more of the Mars transit or the Mars initiation, as we sometimes call it here in, in Shamanic Astrology. So I'm um, going to be discussing what all of that means and we're now past the the first eclipse season of 2022 with the second one coming in in um, the fall October and November of this year so there's there's a lot that's happened recently Jupiter has moved into Aries and I'd refer, refer to you um, that video that uh, was put out uh, just before uh, it went in um, back on May 10th and um, if you want to know more about the eclipses, there's a video for that as well. Um, I'm also just an announcement. I'm going to be part of a symposium we call Rebecoming the One. And so look out for some notifications about that in my newsletter and in my Facebook and Instagram page. Again, this is uh, inspiralnexus.com. And um, you can find that on the Inspiral Nexus Facebook page, as well as uh, my LinkedIn and Instagram, which are also uh, and Spiral Nexus. So take a look at that. And um, I've definitely got some more travels coming up uh, in the summertime. Uh, so I welcome that to come in, including a, uh, um, a couple of classes I'm going to be teaching, one in Florence, Oregon uh, in August. And uh, that's on the Oregon coast, Shamanic Astrology 101. And then uh, just a class about Venus you know, with uh, Mariana uh, Volgaris in uh, Willow Creek, California. That's near Eureka. All right. So with the um, announcements out of the way, let's go into the topic for today for this video. All right. Mars and Aries. This is episode 35 of Signs, Planets, and Stellar Rhythms. I did do a video about Mars and Aries back over a year and a half ago, almost two years ago. Uh, and it was, that was a really big uh, deal when Mars went into Aries uh, back in 2020, spending about six and a half months in that sign. This will be a much shorter journey. It'll be maybe closer, closer to about six weeks, five and a half to six weeks. Um, but it's, um, it'll be significant because there's a lot of activity happening in the sign of Aries, including both Jupiter and Chiron in that sign and going over certain areas where it was before back in 2020, which also connected us, connects us back to that year with the, some of the aspects to look at. And I'm going to be going into some of that as we uh, go through this, uh, these slides here today. All right, um, so here are the episode highlights for episode 35 of Signs, Planets, and Stellar Rhythms, Mars and Aries Journey. 2020, we'll be looking at that a little bit. And of course, this year, what is this uh, particular six weeks of Mars and Aries transit about? The largest synodic cycle of Aries, which I'm going to talk about briefly. And then uh, the Mars conjunctions with Chiron and Jupiter, for sure, will be uh, going into that. So what does all this mean and uh, what dates to look at here? Well, let's take a look at the dates first. Some of the big, bigger dates. There's four dates I highlight, but the entire Mars and Aries transit is from May 24th to July 5th, 2022. And the actual conjunctions and the square are May 29th when it conjuncts Jupiter, Mars and Jupiter. Uh, Mars conjuncts Chiron on June 15th. It conjuncts Eris on June 27th. And then on July 1st, it, squ July 1st, it squares Pluto, 2746 Aries in uh, Pluto and Capricorn. So those are all big, big things. And in fact, as we get into the, the later degrees of Aries, that's when I feel like uh, there's this sort of this reconnection into 2020 from that period of time um, in the uh, summer and fall of 2020. Uh, and, and those those times in particular are going to be, I would say, um, reconnecting us into uh, that period of time. 
And when we get into this year, how what dates are going to be reconnecting us, that's in that late June period, uh, the mid to late June. That's when it's going to really uh, get, get us connected in the first few days of, um, of July as well. So Mars and Aries, there's some slides I'm using to kind of help us refresh our, our, our minds about what this all means. This is a, an, a, an incubation of the masculine here. So um, in this stage, because that's what it, in 2020, that's what was coming about. And now we are entering a kind of a maturation of that. So the incubation turning into a maturation. So this is, again, Aries is the sign that most resonates with the planet Mars in astrology. Its essence is mission orientation. It's actional, it's independent and rugged. It can be likened also at its essence to the garden, a guardian of the cosmic order. It's a fire animal of form that is fast moving, willful. Uh, it's a strength of force and martial skills to overcome obstacles. And like all signs in the zodiac, Aries has been violated and corrupted over the last few thousand years in a direction for fighting wars and subscription to professional armies, especially for men. Uh, wasn't always like that prior to, uh, especially before the Roman Empire, but uh, uh, you know, I think it really started to get started with Alexander the Great and uh, some of that time period, the Hellenistic period. You know, most cases, militaries were temporary things and they were recruited for some particular purpose or cause or, you know, to conquer lands and then they would disband, but they wouldn't be there, you know, year in and year out. Of course, there would be guards and, and so forth at different places, but it wouldn't be, you know, a massive army. That That is a more recent human development. Um, Ares is champion too, at, and at the same time as the ultimate fiercest warrior. And that is a quote, good thing as a, as a good thing for society. So uh, that's what it's sort of this uh, message that comes about the propaganda that this is what we need and we need to have that all the time. Obviously we live in uh, a really powerful time of insecurity um, and wars have become a mainstay. And so it's hard, to, hard for us to think of like, what would be a world without, uh, without wars or, or happening very infrequently. Well, that's, that's where Aries would be repurposed, if you will, to other things. Even today, warriors are shown in entertainment mediums an ultimate good versus evil and a black and white adversarial drama story that is perpetuated across the globe. I have a symbol of Captain America there as a symbol of the, this, like, uh, to, to, to a large degree, the American uh, essence of what good, quote, is and kind of that projection out into the world. But there are other symbols, other countries, certainly other nationalities, other cultures have had this quote of hero mentality that goes back many thousands of years. Hercules, uh, even, even the earth, some of the earliest times, our first, some of our first recordings of what hero is, uh, or Gilgamesh from ancient, ancient Sumeria and Babylon. Um, you know, that hero figure that can come across and, and um, you know, there's, there's some heroes that are in the constellations in the sky that we see in uh, many parts of the world. So this is that the hero myth, it's, it's deep into our, our consciousness. We, you know, Joseph Campbell, a really powerful mythologist, helped break new ground around understanding the hero myth and how it encompasses the whole globe. A Hero of a Thousand Faces, his most famous book. And plus some documentaries that you can find and stream. Really powerful, um, uh, helps deepen uh, our understanding of uh, our, our place in the world and our own journey. Because uh, these, these, these heroes myths are, are, are real journeys that we all have on, on some wavelength, some level. Um, more about Aries. Um, it's about the freedom to choose or commit to be all in to a cause. Fiery, actional, competitive, instinctual, spontaneous, decisive, enthusiastic, and aggressively playful. Um, I mentioned here about the professional soldiers. Um, and even when you go back to the actual quote gods that represented the god of war or uh, similar to what um, the Greek Ares was and the Roman Mars was, 
yeah, there were gods of war before that, but they had other things that they brought to the table that weren't just about war, which is which is really fascinating to to look into. Um, so this reignition of Mars and Aries, what is this? What does this mean? Well, this is the primary primary Mars cycle is the subnautic cycle, and it has to do with in this case, the relationship that Earth has with Mars and the Sun, and they do a dance together. I would refer back to other um, videos I've done about Mars, and especially in um, uh, cooperation and uh, coordination with uh, co-creation with the Shamanic Astrology Mystery School with Daniel Giamario. We did some really powerful videos, uh, Mars webinars that really dive into the undercurrent uh, or understory of what Mars is and what its journey is about. But this one began in uh, October 13, 2020, when Mars and the sun were in opposition to each other, sun on one side of the sky, Mars on the other, Mars rising, sun setting, that launches a whole new cycle. And the, the next time that happens, it's gonna happen in the sun of Gemini, and that'll be in December, uh, December 7th of 2022. And that, that's a whole nother, whole nother video there. But during that time in 2020, Mars had uh, strong aspects to Saturn, Jupiter, Eris, and Pluto. And Mars was a potent catalyst for those planets' initiations in humanity. And so it's returned to the scene of those powerful events. In the US, there was a large upswing of violence in cities, um, ju movements for justice, especially Black Lives Matter, uh, new waves of COVID that hit, and uh, contested uh, presidential election as well. And so there was this, uh, a lot of uh, powerful energy, potent energy coming through um, here in the US that certainly affected uh, others around the world as well. So and on the last day that Mars was in Aries, an insurrection took place in the US Capitol. So there we have another action taken. And, um, you know, uh, it was definitely a, a very dark day in, um, in America. Um, this Mars and Aries transit is the reignition of Mars entering the sign of Aries and for the first time since that 2020, 2021 period. And so is this time 2022 gonna show us a greater maturation, a revolution of that faithful time, not just of the January 6th event, but of the time that was happening, the brewing, the percolating, and the, and the spilling over of, of, of emotions and um, tension and uh, intensity in the world. So it's something to, uh, something to bear that bears watching, especially when I get to that period I, I mentioned uh, in uh, uh, late May, sorry, not late May, but um, mid to late June through early July in that period, that's kind of that Mars going over those steps once again. So here's some dates to look at, some of the different look at this. Mars entering the sign on May of Aries, May 24th, 2022, conjuncting Jupiter on May 29th, conjuncting Chiron on June 15th. And on June 22nd, the moon has an occultation of Mars, which I have a slide for specifically. We talk about that. Uh, to 2108 Aries. And then Mars scores Pluto at 2746. But before that, um, there's a, I think it's, what do we have? On the 27th, Mars has a conjunction with Aries. It's not shown here, but I've got that on the, this other table here. All right, and then um, Mars goes into Taurus after that on uh, July 4th slash 5th. Depending on where you are in the world, it, it, it transits into the sign of Taurus, which will be, uh, that last sign before it reaches uh, Gemini, which is, again, there'll be another video about that. That happens on August 20th, the uh, Mars entering the sign of Gemini. The video will come out sometime in August before the 20th. Uh, so what does it mean for Mars to be in phase five? So far, phase five is interesting because it's, um, in shamanic astrology, again, I refer you back to the shamanic astrology mystery school. You can find more information on shamanicastrology.com and the webinars that Daniel, Jumaro, and I did. And you'll find some references to that in uh, videos I've done about just the Mars cycle itself. There's an introductory video on my YouTube channel you can find. But 
the last time that Mars did this whole pattern where it entered Aries in um, 2020 through 2022, the whole cycle uh, from opposite sun, um, sun, Mars opposition, Sun, Mars opposition, but in the sign of Aries where it started, last time this happened was in 1941 to 1943. And um, so this period of time, um, 2020 was matched by 1941. Of course, this happened several months before uh, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. Europe was embroiled in World War II. And, um, you know, there was this period of time, 1943, which correlates to this year, 2022. This is about the time when the Allies started to turn the corner. They were, they were starting to get more victories uh, in Europe and uh, in, uh, against the Nazis and against also the Japanese empire. In the US, I don't know how much study history folks are, are out there or history buffs, but there were a lot of um, uh, race relations being uh, coming to a head. Um, and uh, you know, the, in the treatment of African-Americans, Latinos and Philippine Americans. This included the Zoot Suit Riots, which is a picture shown here from um, uh, 1946. It was a the photo was 1946, but the, the zoot suits were something that was a, a phenomenon the late, between the late 30s and throughout the 1940s. So, um, uh, which is interesting uh, uh, during that time too. So the, the, the figures of Cesar Chavez and Malcolm X both wore zoot suits in their youth. So they were, they were part of that movement during that time. Uh, just really fascinating time and also quite violent as well. Um, in phase five, which is the fifth phase of six Mars phases over an entire synodic cycle. This is, a, this is about called the culmination of instinctual desires of seizing the day, meaning to fully express one's life mission, cause, or role. As with all cycles, the effects can be long lasting and released outward after the transit. So it won't just be contained only in the Mars and Aries transit from uh, the, this May, my, May 24th to July 4th slash 5th, it'll be something that have, will have ramifications even after that period of time. All right, so let's take a look again at 2020 a little bit. These are just the aspects that were going on and you can see why I was talking about the mid to late June when Mars goes into the, the teens and the 20 degree, 20 plus degree range of Aries. All of the times in 2020 where it was squaring Jupiter, Aries in 19 degrees, close to 20 degrees, squaring Saturn in the latter part of, of the 20 degree range, Aries, well, Saturn and, and Jupiter were in Capricorn. And the same thing with Pluto in the, in the mid, early to mid 20 degree range here uh, in um, between August and December of 2020. And then again, conjuncting Aries in August through December of 2020. Again, this is all stuff. So it, it is sort of a re, reignition of this. It doesn't mean the same thing will happen. This is, I wanna, I wanna re, make sure everyone's aware of that. This is a maturation. So it's, a, it's another level of, of us understanding and reviewing that, of going back and looking like, is that what was going on then? How can we come to a greater level of that experience, a re, maybe a refined level and take action in a way that, is, that supports humanity's path? Uh, meaning they maybe, uh, you know, especially uh, in the right kinds of causes, such as, you know, like with uh, the Black Lives Matter movement and uh, justice, movement for justice and protection of, of rights uh, for uh, people, human beings, and not just here in America, but, but around the world too. Um, and um, so you might find a kind of a, a, a reignition of that energy there. But Aries was part of that with Chiron as well last in 2020. So we might have a, a deeper level connection. I have a, 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 you know, there's a Chiron and Aries video that I've done uh, that I would refer to you uh, to help you understand what's happening. Um, and I would also refer you to the Jupiter and Aries video that I did recently, which also includes some Chiron material too. So combined, you, you get a, a much greater understanding. And this is all in degrees, really the prominent ones between 18 and 29 degrees of Aries. So for those that have some prominent Aries degrees, you're definitely gonna be impacted by 
uh, by this Mars transit and um, perhaps even were impacted by that back in 2020. So this might be a kind of a review of that, a reconnection to that. Again, not the same thing, but a deeper level understanding of, uh, you know, instinctually speaking of what we're moving into here. Um, so what, what does this look like in the sky? So when Mars enters Aries, this is what's going on. Mars is visible in the early morning sky. And you can see here when it enters Aries, it's only a couple of degrees away from Jupiter in Aries, which they end up in, in conjunction um, in the, um, uh, you know, in May 29th, so only five days later. So we could see Neptune not far, only five degrees away. Mars just had a, a conjunction with Neptune as of this recording. Saturn is way up here, still in Aquarius. So you can see how far these planets have moved since their conjunctions over here. This is also the time when the moon and Neptune are conjunct and the moon is uh, nearing its conjunction with Mars on May 24th. Chiron is here, uh, Venus is here, and Eris, Eris is over here. It's not here, there's another slide I have, Eris, you can see the, the general location of where that is, but this is all happening in the fish constellation. So it's not the ram or what other astro astronomers might see is like, oh, well, that's, these are seasonal energies that we're dealing with and against the backdrop of the constellations, which share their own, uh, you know, they help inform the science as well. So 2000 years ago, Aries and the Ram were lined up together, but now they're, they're, they're very different. And so there's a different feel to the Aries energy in this age in which we're living in today. Um, Okay, here. So here's another Mars Chiron conjunction. So Mars and Chiron coming in, and Mars had already passed Jupiter just back on May 29th. And then you see Uranus also uh, in this picture. And Venus is here too. I don't have a little circle, but it was pretty bright. So it's, it's pretty easy to see on the bottom of this uh, screen here. That's again, that's on June 15th when that happens. This is um, the X mark. I've got it also here too. This is the vernal equinox point. Uh, what that is, is when the sun moves from the southern point of where the sun moves from the southern hemisphere into the northern hemisphere. And so Mars is passing that point where the sun was back in uh, the March equinox, uh, also called the vernal equinox point. So that's part of the energy that is being activated um, as Mars goes through that area of the sky. And um, here is Mars um, back on 2020. This is a, a kind of a, a relook at uh, what is happening here um, and why why this is important. So back in 2020, this is where Mars stationed retrograde again. This is part of a large part of why Mars spent a lot of time in the sign of Aries is because this is when Earth caught up with Mars in its orbit. So here we have this um, this time where it's right at the the crux of the fish constellation of the knot of the fish, a star called Alresha, which is kind of holding the fish in and helping it launch out beyond the waters, the cosmic waters into uh, above the, uh, not only of the projected equator, but the ecliptic, the path of the sun. So we've seen that area of the sky that's gonna be reignited in early July. So that'll be the time where, where Mars will reach that in July of 2022, early July. So that's just another uh, kind of a, a re-look a re at what was going on then. But I would also refer you back to my Mars video back then to see what else was, was happening uh, during that time back in, in 2020. Um, then Mars squares Pluto on July 1st of 2022. And you can see Eris in this slide. This is the slide I brought in Eris. Mars has a conjunction with Eris on June 27th of this year, 2022. And just a few days later, four days later, it, it, it squares Pluto. Pluto's right here. I have a kind of a zoom out so you can see the full square here. The square is an, a roughly 90 degree angle uh, in the sky. So, um, so if we're, you know, if Mars is at between the two horizons, the east and western horizon, um, if there's a planetary body or a star, um, on one of those horizons, then that's a square. And in this case, that, that would be the case when Pluto sets that evening, Mars will be roughly uh, between the uh, Eastern and Western horizons uh, on the globe. 
uh, wherever you might be located. Um, so we can see there's a lot of planetary activity and what Eris brings in as well is there's sort of this strong chaos. Um, it's about the, the voice, the strong, the strength and voice of the feminine coming through here. Um, a certain wit about this energy and a, just kind of a disruptive energy. Um, it doesn't mean things always go awry there, but it helps us find and understand and connect to what issues are really happening that we can't ignore them. And Eris brings it into the front and center, allows us to see it fully for what it really is. Um, so that I find Eris can be, be really helpful. And uh, you definitely want to invite Aries as a balance to all the order we try to corral. And I think part of the reason a chaos disrupts us so much is that we uh, here in modern society, we, we put so much attention into order and to try to put it into some perfect place that um, it, it, it doesn't really work that way uh, or doesn't last that long. So we have to find a balance between um, the disruptive chaos and the, uh, the intensive order that we've got in our, um, so Eris reminds us of that balance of, of creating that in our lives. Um, and then we do live in a time where chaos is, uh, you know, becoming more, more and more prominent in recent years between the pandemic and the disruption of all the systems on the globe, uh, economic, social, political, um, health, uh, everything. So educational, we're, we're having to deal with quite a lot here. Um, and uh, being at the center of everything, of uh, this turning of the ages, this is again, this is just another video as a, as a, as a summary of Mars, Mars and Aries transit. Um, this would be like, we could take this and do an entire longer class. Um, and there'll be more information I'll share as we, as we go along, but this is a pretty, pretty big uh, uh, transit. And I just wanted to bring awareness to everyone about this one. All right, and the last one we have is this occultation on June 27th, sorry, 22nd at 2108 Aries. So Mars has three, there's three occultations that the moon covers up Mars. And it means that Mars becomes like, it, it, it gets behind the sun, behind the moon, and so we cannot see what's going on there. We don't, we don't see Mars. So it's, it's, it kind of enhances and amplifies that, that, that power, whatever, that what Mars, whatever Mars is doing. So that's part of the reason why this particular passage of uh, Mars and Aries is, is especially potent. So this occultation is only gonna be visible to people in the extreme Southern hemisphere uh, south of, of New Zealand on the South Pacific Islands. So we can see where these blue circles are is where that occultation happens. And only if you're really in those islands and if it's on the dark end, because you're not gonna see Mars in the daytime. So if you see Mars at night in the early morning sky, this is where it's gonna happen here. Now there's, there's two more, I'm sorry, uh, one more. No, two more in one in July and one more in December. Uh, so that will be um, an obscur obscuration of the, of the planet Mars for several minutes as, 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 as the moon takes, you know, uh, depends on where it is along the disk of the moon. Um, sometimes it's just several minutes, sometimes it could be up to an hour's time. So an occultation of Mars emphasizes that area of the sign. Um, uh, so the archetype itself will be especially potent. And this uh, image is from Guy Outwell's 2022 astronomical calendar. And for those that want to know more and learn more about the astronomical uh, side of this, the Guy Outwell's uh, calendars, uh, he does such a fantastic job of uh, sharing all the different imagery around the, the planets and what they're doing in the phases of the moon. Um, and the different aspects that are going on with the, with the um, with the planets and the stars and the sky, including the eclipses. Really great material about that too. So I fully recommend um, his work there. All right, well, that's all the time I have for this particular subject. And I do astrology readings, classes, events, astrocartography, 
Um, and you can find me at inspiralnexus.com as well as mystaralchemy.com. I do some work with uh, uh, astrologer and priestess Kaylin Castell, and we're going to be doing another webinar series beginning in the late summer, September of 2022, about the zodiacal star. So stay tuned for more information about that. But you can find more um, information directly if you go to mystaralchemy.com. And then also at shamanicastrology.com is where the uh, original shamanic astrology material is based and where I was uh, managing director for nine years um, back uh, that ended about a couple of years ago. So um, feel free to send me questions, comments, uh, sign up for my newsletter, inspiralnexus.com. And I look forward to sharing more in the near future. Uh, take care, everyone.